Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Frank here, continuing work on the Cup Cadet Mini Dozer. And this is the body shop episode. So we're continuing to work on the additional body panels. We've got the fender and seat support finished. I lowered from the last episode, I've lowered the seat about two inches and I've sat in it and it's a, it's, a good, it's a good height. It was a little bit too high last time. So I think that's a good spot. It, what I'm working on now is the uh, leg panel. So this is a piece of metal which will protect the operator's legs from the tracks. And I just have a piece of cardboard that I've been uh, playing with here. And, oh, look who's, look who's come in here. There's my Brutus and there's Butchie. How you guys doing, huh? Does anybody want a treat? Anybody want a treat? Let's see if we can get a treat here. Sit, both, no, get down, get down, sit, sit. All right, that's better. That's my Brutus. You're being a good boy. Yeah. And there's my Butchie. Butchie's a big boy. Brutus, Brutus is his little brother. They're actually, they're from the same litter, of course. Um, Butchie was pup number one, and Brutus was pup number three. Butchie is a chow hound and has about 10 pounds on Brutus. Okay, so this panel will protect the operator's legs and I've got it marked. Um, it, it needs to be a little bit taller back here and it's about right down here. I want it about an inch above the tracks. So I've got the dimensions on here. 22, 12 down here, 12 tall, 22 tall here, 24 inches wide. And then there'll be a five by 24 inch flat base or bottom that will go across the, the laterals that the operator's foot, feet sit on. All right, the only decision I need to make is whether to use eighth inch or three sixteenths for that. I've got more three sixteenths than I have eighth. I have two pieces of three sixteenths. Um, so I just need to decide, you know, what I want to want to do for that. After we get the that panel fabricated, the next thing uh, is a tunnel cover, a cover for the space here between uh, the seat and the dash. So we'll enclose this area, you know, so that'll give us an, a finished look for that. I'll get set up to cut this sheet metal and then I'll bring you back for that and then the fabrication. As I mentioned uh, last episode or the episode before, I'm working on the blade mount for the front of the tractor. And I've been working on different ideas for both a four-way and a six-way blade. I think I've settled on a six-way blade. And uh, working out the details of the way to mount it and um, manage the blade, both from a you know, geometry and hydraulics perspective. I've come up with an idea that I think solves that, that problem easily 
and potentially provides additional benefits. And that is, at this point, I'm thinking about putting a tractor category one three point hitch on the front of the dozer. So what that would give me is two lower support arms, each hydraulically, independently hydraulically driven, which is different from a category one hitch where they're driven simultaneously. I would drive them, lift them hydraulically separately, and then have a hydraulic top link, and then a hydraulic angle cylinder that would allow me to angle the blade. So that would give me four cylinders. I could actually dispense with the, potentially dispense with the hydraulic top link, but at this point probably we'll, we'll try to do that. And that will allow me actually one additional degree of freedom for the blade, for the mold board, and that would allow me to actually pitch the blade. That's what I'm thinking about now is a category one hitch. And it would also allow me to take a blade off, use a standard um, three point hitch blade, which I mean, that has big advantages. Uh, I actually have, I have one for my Kubota that I could just put on. And it would also allow me to attach other three point hitch implements, a draw bar, uh, for with a ball hitch to move, you know, to tow something or move something around or, you know, a subsoiler or, or any uh, box blade, something like that. So that actually gives me additional um, flexibility on the types of implements that could be attached. So that's where I am right now before I get to that. And that will be, you know, an episode or two from now before we, I start working on that in earnest. Uh, but that's where my mind is. And I'd be interested in any comments you might have about that approach, whether you think that's a good idea or a bad idea. Or, uh, it does. So one of the drawbacks to that idea is it's not, it's not scale. I mean, it doesn't, it differs from, you know, my idea of having a miniature uh, kind of a scale bulldozer because that departs from what a typical bulldozer has on the front. So that's the kind of the dilemma that I'm, I'm dealing with is the, the struggle between um, making it look like a miniature bulldozer versus building something which is you know, flexible and functional and, um, now putting a three point hitch on it doesn't really preclude me in the way I plan it. It would be removable, um, from doing something else later. And I may, if I get into it and I may change my mind and don't know, um, as I work on, you know, installing it I may come to a point where it doesn't look like it will work I mean that's always possible so I may have to change my mind at that point the other the other approach to mount the blade is to use since I need the flexibility of the blade to move in multiple directions uh, my plan would was to use a trailer hitch ball and coupler to give me the motion, the flexibility of the blade to move up and down pitch and, you know, side to side. So, you know, and then to control it with hydraulic cylinders. That's the other, I mean, that's the other approach is uh, trailer ball and hitch arrangement versus uh, three point hitch. Now with a trailer ball, I could always take, my thought would be to take the, could take the blade off and, you know, use the put a receiver on there with a trailer ball in it actually. And, you know, I could put other things in the receiver and, you know, tow stuff around or whatever, you know, could be fit in a two by two receiver, hitch receiver. So those are the two, you know, I'm thinking about practicality and flexibility you know, for the machine 
um, you know, in addition to, you know, making it look, you know, like a, like a bulldozer, uh, uh, you know, bulldozer, I, I mean, a, a standard, a real bulldozer would have the blade more closely coupled to the tractor, more compact. Putting a three-point hitch on it pushes the blade out, you know, a couple of feet in front. So, but it also allows me to remove the blade easily, drop it, you know, give me flexibility and storage and that sort of thing. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down the three point hitch path and see what mock it up and see what it looks like. And if it looks odd, then I may abandon it and, you know, go to the hitch ball coupler um, arrangement, which would allow me to more closely couple the blade to the tractor. That is, get the blade closer to the front of the tractor, as you might see in a, in a you know, real bulldozer. So um, that's where my mind is right now. Be interested in your thoughts. Uh, give me some feedback in the comments and um, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see where this winds up. So I've made a little change here to my plasma table setup. I got a couple of welding blankets here and I've suspended them basically around the plasma table to uh, keep the wall behind it and the garage door back here and here from you know getting dirty either from splashes of you know, the tape water from the w table or sparks or that sort of thing. So this over here on the, on the left side will also block any sparks, you know, coming over to the computer. So it still allows me to use my Davit crane. I can rotate it around and use it. And the way I've got this set up is, is kind of temporary. I'm going to see how it works. There's just a two by two run down here at an angle to support this corner. Across the back, it's fastened to a two by two, which is supported horizontally. And then over here, I have another two by two that's actually attached to the toolbox. So I can move this around. I can unhook it. The, the grommets are just on screws, so I can unhook the grommet from the screws here and drop it, and I can move it. So it's, it is in a uh, easily changeable configuration, but hopefully it'll control some of the, some of the sparks and, and spatter that comes off the, the plasma cutter.
I've got the the foot supports would be the bot at the bottom of the leg panel. So this one I have some cleanup to do on. I have to cut this little corner off. I can do that. But it's certainly still usable. I can save this. And the other two leg panels came out came out fine. So we'll get these moved over to the bench and to the work table and tack them up and see what they look like on the, on the tractor. So this is basically what the leg panel assembly will look like. Foot rest, this will rest on the laterals and this will then go up, protect the operator's legs from the tracks. Go set this on the tractor and see what it looks like. Alright, so that's basically the arrangement. It'll overlap the fender here by an inch and then run parallel to the track about a half inch away. Put the foot pad down. That fits, that fits fine. All right, so that's basically the arrangement for, for that. We'll put a couple of screws or through the foot pad into the laterals to hold that in position. We'll probably put it on there in position, tack it up so that it has the right, maintains the right position. So that looks fine, I think. All right, we'll come back and tack that up and put the other one on and tack it up.
I've got two more, two more things to do. Maybe it's one more thing to do, two, two tasks. One is to drill a hole for a bolt to go through here to hold the top end of the leg shield. And then a couple of bolts in the bottom of the foot well to hold them to the laterals. So I'm going to mark those, I'll drill the holes through the leg panel pieces and then I'll put it back in and drill and probably just drill and tap for the laterals here. I think I'm going to put a through bolt with a nut um, since it may be exposed on both sides to hold that. And it's just going to be, they're just going to be quarter 20, um, quarter 20 bolts. I might have some pan head or flat head bolts for the foot well. I have to look and see. Okay, let me um, mark these and then we'll drill, I'll drill some holes. I decided to use 5 16 fasteners. I have, because I have some of these nice stainless round head socket cap screws. And I'm going to use these for the bottom of the foot well for the two, two fasteners there. And then I've got a regular 5 16 um, hex head cap screw for the upper connection point right here. All right, so we'll put those on. All right, I cut out what I hope will be tunnel cover. Let's go check it out, see if it fits.
All right, so that's the tunnel cover. Looks like easy movement of the controls. All right, I want to just drill a couple holes and then I'm going to tap the frame for a few uh, like thumb screws so this would be easy, easily removable. I'm going to go take all the sharp edges off of this panel. For all the guys that are telling me to use transfer punches, there's my set.
I'm going to get some thumb screws to put in there. Um, but for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and drop some little, some short uh, quarter 20 bolts. I think that completes the body work that I planned for this particular episode. Fenders, leg panels, and tunnel cover. I still have one more, one more thing I'm going to do, and that is close in the dash. There's a, an opening here in the dash. I need to cut a, a little plate to fit in there, cover that up. I'll do that. I did add, and I didn't really show this, I did cut a, um, a, a panel, rectangular panel to fit down in here to support a toolbox. So I think that's what I'm going to do is put a toolbox back here uh, for, you know, the essential tools I need for this, you know, to run the equipment straps and stuff like that so that's the plan for back here unless i decide to do something different uh, it's possible that i'll wind up putting a winch back here and i may modify this to to accept that or i may attach the winch to the to the outside don't know yet it's essentially done from a basic track vehicle perspective the next thing to start working on is the blade. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm you know trying to decide the best way to you know attach the attach the blade. The three-point hitch idea has some appeal and the and perhaps even simplicity to it but maybe not the authenticity, you know, for a miniature, you know, bulldozer. It may, it may look, it may look odd. So I don't know. I have a three point blade for my Kubota that I may bring up here and set in front of the tractor and kind of look at the dimensions and see what it would look like. Uh, so, some more thought to, to go in into that.
All right, guys. That's all the time we have this week. <laughs> Got my puppies again. Coming back in here. This is my Brutus. He's such a sweet. And then, of course, Butch, he wants to get in the act. It's been raining outside. It just started raining. And these guys are a little bit wet. What a good puppy. You're my good boy. Yeah, my good boy. My good boy. And you're my good boy, too. <laughs> it just started raining out. The guys are all wet. Uh, okay, so <laughs> that's, that's it for this week. We got a lot accomplished. Uh, the leg wells, leg protector panels and foot wells, and uh, the tunnel cover, and adjusted the seat. So, And I've also got the arrangement here for a toolbox on the back which I think is a, a neat idea. I like that. As you can see, the, the tractor's running pretty well. Um, I love the way it spins. You could see me doing the, doing the spins out there. Um, you know, being able to run one track forward and the other one in reverse at the same time, which is, which is the whole purpose behind having two different drives, right? I mean, that's how the newer dozers and skid steers and stuff are um, built with two independent track drive mechanisms. And that's the only way I could do it with the Cub Cadet axles. And if you go back to the early episodes of the series, you'll see how I modified the transmissions and the rear ends to accommodate this. And in order to do that, I mean, the axles are fixed. Uh, so you know, I have to tension them with another another wheel, this upper wheel, and having, and it also requires that the drive sprockets be on diagonally opposite corners. I can't tell any difference between the right track and the left track and the way it behaves when I'm operating it. I, I maybe, and I think I said this a couple episodes ago, maybe somebody with a lot more experience would be able to differentiate and you know show a weakness or something I, I'm, I'm sure there is but I don't I don't I can't detect it I don't know what it is so I'm happy with the way it operates as you can see it spins around it drives forwards and backwards predictably the controls are a little bit less sensitive than they were the first time I drove it two episodes ago um, since I made the change on the linkage um, there's a couple things I want to do. I want to go back in and revisit the uh, the drive shaft. I notice a little bit of wobble. I think I have some uh, inserts in the couplings which will remove that. Um, it's not bad, but it's a, it is a little bit. Um, I'm going to look at that. One of the things that's on my list to do here is to do get some painting done. I certainly need to at least prime all of the bare metal that's that uh, recently added the fender seat support tunnel cover most of the well the track too the inside of the track at least needs to be primed the at least the areas that won't get wear as much wear uh, and of course the frame the track frame and the idlers and stuff have already been primed so i'd like to get a coat of paint on everything kind of get it looking better and to keep keep rust at bay here so i don't know whether i can do it outside the weather's not really conducive for painting outside i i, I don't want to cover my shop with overspray um, i am using you know can rattle cans so you know i don't need a big spray booth but i do need to put some drop cloths down and wear a respirator and that sort of thing so i'll i'll, I'll probably pull the fender off and tunnel cover and leg wells and paint them paint them separately maybe on the bench or something and then come back and i've got you know a good bit of dirt at this point you know down here on the 
on the track frame kicked up by the by the tracks so I need to clean all that off before I can put any paint on there but okay so that's on the list of things to do and then of course the next thing is to start working on you know the front blade I'm gonna bring the three-point hitch blade up here that I have for my Kubota and set it on the floor in front of the tractor and look at the dimensions uh, I'm gonna to have to build a frame in front of the grill and and I, it would probably be spaced away a little bit but I do need a frame to hold the top of the hydraulic cylinders so that's what's going to go on here is a support frame for the hydraulic cylinders that'll lift the lift the blade operate the blade everything else I mean there were a lot of good suggestions about what to do with the dash the holes in the dash I haven't really decided what I'm going to do there I have ordered two twin spool hydraulic valves so I'll have four spools I, I was I originally talked about buying a loader valve with a you know float function I, I don't think I may change my mind and go back to that but right now that isn't that isn't what I'm thinking about I'm thinking about two twin spooled valves and two twin spool yeah valve assemblies so it'd be a total of four spools so I have four controls the, the idea is one for each side of the blade for picking up so I could pick both of them up at the same time or one side versus the other and then the top link cylinder which will allow me to pitch the blade and then an angle cylinder allow me to angle the blade um, so that's the four cylinders I'm planning on right now I'll probably mount them to either through the dash or off to the side of the dash I, I'm, I, right now I'm thinking probably off to the side of the dash so that's where my mind is right now I'm happy with the way it operates at this point all right so that's a wrap on this episode we'll come back next week looking at the front blade and how we're going to mount that that'll be some discussion and I don't know how much build will get done but We'll at least get some, maybe some mock-ups. I may have to get some two by fours and <laughs> screw them together to see how, see how it's going to work. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you guys next time.